Yes, yes, I know. After all that hype from the last video, I'll show you this. Well, does it actually live up to the hype? Yes, it does. Amazing, marvelous, stupendous, colossal, tremendous, gigantic, astounding, unbelievable, spectacular, phenomenal. And it's good too. First, let's address the elephant in the room. Let me tell you what I don't like about the manga. I really, really hate the title on the cover. They are so bad. I know for a fact that if I wasn't specifically looking for this manga, I would have 100% glossed over it and never gave it a chance to begin with. I mean, look at how generic it looks. Would you have clicked on it? No. The title is generic and stupidly long, and the cover looks like just another trashy Zikai with a bland protagonist and his keychain elf companion who has the personality and charm of a cardboard cutout. It's so misleading. This story is so much more than just these two. The other thing that I hate is the fact that there isn't enough chapters. I need more. This manga is freaking good. It's like the author took all the genres and aspects that make a manga trash and generic, mixed them all into an unholy goop, then turned it into an absolutely gourmet dish. It tastes good! It's so delicious I can't get enough of it. The beautiful art, the awesome story, and the fantastic cast of characters. Bravo! They even made me emotional within six chapters. Do you have any idea how hard it is to make me that invested into a character that we have literally just met two chapters ago? Hinora Takumi, you have earned my respect and my undying support. Now enough for the theatrics. Let me tell you the premise. When you begin the manga, you are greeted with the protagonist Ed getting kicked out from his party. It seems that they think he has been slacking off and he no longer deserves to be in the hero's party. Now at this point, we're thinking, oh, it's going to be another one of those. But something is different. Condition met 10 minutes remaining until return. Because Ed's reaction is that of happiness and excitement. Now I'm confused, and so are the other characters. He then reaches into his pocket dimension storage that his party didn't know about and brings out a bunch of books, guides, and maps for his party members, all so that he can help them after he leaves. After seeing this, his party members immediately apologize to Ed. They say that they are ashamed that they didn't realize how hard he was working for their sake, and they would love to bring him back to the party. But you can't unring a bell. This is what he was waiting for. Only a few moments remain and he needs to leave. So he tells them that he will be looking forward to them beating the Demon King, then heads out. Remaining time until the return. 10 seconds. He runs to a spot out of sight. Three, two, one. Executing World Transmigration. Where he gets transported into a white realm. World Transmigration complete. Thank you for traveling with us. And don't forget to subscribe to the Manga Barista channel. The only things in it are a table with a crystal ball on it, two chairs, and a lot of lone standing doors. And that's where we learn about Ed's circumstances. You see, Ed is an adventurer. One day when he was hunting some low-level monsters, he suddenly found himself in that place. On the table was a book. It told him that in order for him to go back to his world, he would need to go through the door to another world and get recognized as a companion by the hero there, work together for more than half a year and gain a certain level of trust. And by being exiled, the conditions will be met. Once he is done, a new door will appear next to the previous one. Rinse and repeat. He will need to go through 100 different doors, 100 different worlds. And with around a year in each world, that comes down to 100 years, give or take. Thankfully, every time he returns, his age, physique, and energy are reset back to the first time he came. And he will get a skill each time. Now here we are, 100 years later, at the end of his journey. And finally, it's time for him to go back home. But before that, he gets another skill. This one seems to be a one-use only skill. I wonder what it does. But who cares? A new door appears. The door that will lead him home. He worked hard for a hundred years for this moment. Or wait, what if a hundred years also passed in his world? Are his loved ones even alive anymore? Then a book falls and tells Ed that the digits under the number plate of the door represent the time passed in that world since leaving it. And in this case, Zero. So he's good to go. Back to the moment he got kidnapped. Only one problem though. The door is locked. Then another book falls on the MC. This is a very inefficient way of communication. This one has a key and a card that says commemoration service. The key is able to open any of the hundred doors that Ed went through 
only once. In order to open the door to his home world, he would need to use the key on any of the doors, go into that world, then simply use the key again on any regular door to come back to the white world. And bam, the door home will be open. Ed decides to use this chance to get some well-deserved R&R. After all, he has been grinding for 100 years. He can even use some of the gold he saved up to live it up a little. He jumps by the doors wondering which one to choose. Ooh, pick somewhere over the beach! Until his eyes stop at door numero uno. The first door he ever went through. The number is 10. So it has been 10 years since he left that place. More than enough time to defeat the demon lord. So it's most likely a peaceful world by now. A perfect place for his vacation. With his decision made, he opens the door and heads in. Now heads up. I will continue talking about the story up until chapter 6 or 7 because I feel like that's where this journey truly begins. I can't just stop here because you have seen nothing yet. So you know the drill. This is your chance to go and experience those first chapters for yourself if you want to. Then come back. Please come back. It's lonely over here. As for those who wish to stay, get cozy. It teleports to that world. Now where is that beach? Then fights a big monster. This fight serves two purposes. The first one is to showcase how strong Ed is. And the second, you'll find out later. Ed remembers that there was a town near where he is right now. So he heads towards it. Uh, you go on ahead, I'll go look for the beach. But when he arrives at where the town should be, there is only rubble. This doesn't make sense. The world should be peaceful. So how? He then meets an old man scavenger who tells him that the ones behind this are the demon lord's army. But what about the hero Alexis? Shouldn't he have killed the demon lord by now? The hero died five years ago fighting the demon king's army. Dead is dead. dead. Party of real heroes, not fakes like me, lost to the lost. army. Lost. army. Lost. Dead. Why, why, why? What the hell happened after six times? Six times. And just to confirm it with his own eyes, he uses his skill. Akashi Compass. A compass that points to the direction of whatever you ask it to. He asks it to point towards the place where the hero Alexis died, which it does. Then Gonzo, the same place as Alexis, since they died fighting together. Tia. Not applicable. Tia, what's the current location of Tia and Tia? He's alive. Ed uses this skill to bolt towards her current location. He absolutely hauls ass past mountains, lakes, and valleys. He even mows through an entire demon army with zero consideration. <laughs> Run, you beautiful son of a bitch. Run! And finally arrives at Tia's house. But it's ready to go in empty handed. So he prepares a fruit basket. Manners, people, never forget them. He knocks on the door and stumbles inside. And there she is, the best character in the manga in all her glory. She got the Guinevere pose and everything. What? Upon seeing Ed, she immediately jumps into his arms. She's happy to see him. She says that she looked for him everywhere. She thought he was dead. To which Ed responds by saying that he changed his name after he was exiled and has been traveling the world. Either way, she's happy to see him. After a bit of catching up and goofing around, we finally find out what happened to the hero party. After they kicked out Ed, they struggled to find another porter. Since at that point in time, the only people interested in joining the hero's party were people who wanted to fight and gain merits, rather than just being a baggy and staying behind. They ended up having to hire a professional porter, but he quit three months after, because he didn't live up to their standard. And their standard was Ed. Cause you see at that time, Ed had no skills or powers. So he worked hard and did everything he can to be of use to them. He carried luggage, managed the budget and supplies, cooked and cleaned. He was basically their mom. The other porters could not fill his shoes. And that's when they realized what they took for granted. A bit too late. They are then approached by someone who offered to be a porter and do all those chores for them. They accepted and resumed the journey. And after a long time, they finally reached the demon world. But once they arrived at the Demon King's domain, they were waiting for them. But luckily, Tia had already prepared a few teleportation crystals for emergencies. All they needed to do was get them from the bag. But the porter ran away. He used the crystal and teleported away with all their supplies. Was it just a coward? Or was it a trap all along? 
Either way, their only choice was to fight, but they were flanked from behind, and they knew their fate was sealed. The only thing they had left was a teleportation crystal plated in the hero's armor, a last-ditch effort to save the hero in case of an emergency, but he chose to give it to Tia. He chose to sacrifice himself for his comrade. The admirable choice, but sadly, the wrong choice. Because a world without a hero is a doomed world. After that, Tia went into hiding, the hero party was announced to be dead. Humanity sent a few expeditions to the demon world, but they all failed. And that's how the story ends. As Tia and Ed keep talking, a lesser dragon attacks the house. Ed goes out to kill it, but he is pulled back by Tia saying that she will protect him. Yeah! Go girl! Fuck him up! She uses her magic to slice the poor lizard in half. Let's go! That's best girl right there! But it seems that she used too much energy and now she is tired. So Ed tells her to go back inside and rest. A moment later, he hears a thud. He goes to check up on Tia and finds her on the floor next to her bed. She was in the middle of changing, so he was able to see her torso. It was covered in what seemed to be black bruises, like dead patches of skin. What could cause such a condition? Ed helps Tia back to her bed, then questions her about it. Apparently during the last fight with Alexis and Gonzo, Tia used the secret elf technique that increased her magical power in exchange for her lifespan. And just now on the lesser dragon, she used the last of her reserve. She did it because she thought Ed would be killed, and Ed couldn't help but feel guilty. He was the one that came here to make sure she was safe, but ended up being the reason she... Tia comforts him by saying that despite her living a relatively short life for an elf, she lived it to the fullest, and she was very happy that she met him and the others. They are then interrupted by a bunch of monsters that sense the magical powers, and Ed is really not in the mood for it. Despite Tia's pleas, he heads out to take care of them. This time, he'll be the one doing the protecting. Tia struggles slowly to get outside, only to find the aftermath of the battle if you can even call it that, and finally realize he really did get stronger. She then asks him if he could take her to the border of the demon world. Ed realizes where she wants to go and why she wants to go there, and I'm sure you do too. So he accepts. A few hours later they finally arrive at the place where Alexis and Gonzo died. Tia sits down and talks to Ed about the time they exiled him. All they ever wanted, or she ever wanted, was to protect Ed. She wanted him to live his life freely in a peaceful world instead of sacrificing his life for said peace. She didn't believe in herself to protect Ed, and she didn't believe in Ed. Perhaps if she did, maybe things would have gone differently. Ed tells Tia about his home and how one day he'll take her to meet his family. Ah, but if I make money and go home, there will be a lot of idiots who will try to rob me. <laughs> so I'll introduce them to Tia. All while Tia slowly goes to sleep. Ah, right! With these exact skills, I can do almost anything! I can defeat a demonic beast and become an aristocrat with that achievement. And then one day, I'll eventually become a lord of a kingdom. <laughs> but... <laughs> Never to wake up again. Ed doesn't want to accept this ending, so he decides to use the last skill he got. He chooses to sacrifice his hundred years of effort to send all his memories and experiences back in time to the day he first entered the White Realm, all for the sake of saving his friends. I'm getting some massive Ragnar Crimson vibes from this, and I love it. This time, things will be different, because this time, he is strong. He heads into that world, meets up with Alexis, Gonzo, and of course, Tia. And well, let the adventure begin! <laughs> See? That's why I said that this manga is an amalgamation of all the trash genres. The isekai, the abandoned party member, and the regression. Yet the author, the mad lad, actually made something good of it. No, it's better than good. It's amazing. It's such a breath of fresh air.
It's so good to see a manga with an abandoned protagonist plot that isn't overly dramatic. None of the characters feel overbearing, moody, or cartoonishly cynical. They're all decent people, like the party that we see at the beginning. Yes, they kick out Ed, but they do it in a respectful manner. They acknowledge his merits and just wish for him to be motivated again. And when Ed presents his guides and books, they immediately humble themselves and apologize instead of being arrogant. And this is also the case for the first party, where they kicked out Ed because they were worried for his safety. They even tricked him into thinking they kicked him out because he walked in on Tia, instead of outright telling him that he's weak and should go home. Because that would have only made him push himself even harder. And Ed himself is understanding and never held a grudge. Also, I will say this again. It is very hard to get me to care about a character enough to feel emotional about them. Let alone a character that we've just met. But damn, that was an amazing beginning to this manga. But of course, all that would not be nearly as good without the amazing art of Tsukasa Gemmori. It is actually amazing. The monster designs are unconventional, like this monster that looks like it came out of a Bayonetta game. And this manga also has some of the coolest weapons and skills I have ever seen in this genre. Like this earth restraining magic that looks like a giant statue embracing the target. Or this sword that at first glance looks like a simple silver rod, but once it's activated it sprouts wings and cuts everything so cleanly it barely leaves a mark. It's so cool! I also really love how the characters are drawn. For example, the party from the first chapter. For a group of characters that we only see for a few pages in the first chapter, they look like fully fledged main cast characters. I also like how beautiful they draw Tia. For a character with a generic and flat elf design, she really pops out and steals the show. And speaking of lively art, I think the biggest example of it is this page. It has so much personality to it. You have the carriage heading towards a new town with lots of chimneys. You have Gonzo sitting on the roof of the carriage, probably because he's too big to fit inside. Alexis is sitting solemnly inside. Tia is hanging out and looking at their destination. And here we see Ed grabbing her so she wouldn't fall. <laughs> it all just screams adventure. An adventure that would be pointless without a lovable cast of characters. Ed is a great protagonist. You realize this almost immediately when he is kicked out. Where instead of the usual cringish peel, he gives the people that kicked him out all the necessary support they need. Because he understands that it was him that tricked them into kicking him out. And they are still good people. Still, he was under no obligation to write them all those guides. But he did. And that makes him a good person. His main motivation is to go home. Which is something that I really wish more Isika manga would lean into. I'm sick of the lonely orphan protagonist who has no attachment to his previous world. I want more characters that understand that there are people who love them back home and do everything they can to go back to them. And Ed worked tirelessly for a hundred years for that goal. A hundred years that he eventually sacrificed for those he cared about. He was so close. Yet he still chose to go through another century if it meant they were safe. Next is Tia. Where do I begin? She looks like a generic Sikai elf with no personality. But she is everything but that. She has so much personality. Every expression she makes is pure gold. She is the heart and soul of this manga. You can't not love this girl. She's also very strong. I mean, she one shot decapitated the lesser dragon. And that was during the time when she was basically dying. And that's why she is purely the best. I personally am not part of the Tia Sims enterprises, but they have my manga priest abyssal support. Next is the hero Alexis. He is a narcissist, but the good kind of narcissist. He likes to say he's special and he's the best, but uh, yeah, he actually is special and excels at everything. I mean, look at this. He made this roof in like an hour. So, is it fair to call him a narcissist when he's actually what he says he is? Yup, he's a cocky bastard and I love him. And let's not forget, this is the guy who chose to save his comrade instead of himself and who is actively risking his life to save his people. Also, he's a bit of a tsundere. And last but not least is my man Gonzo. He is the healer of the party. Haha, <laughs> now that's my kind of healer. Don't worry comrade, we'll kick your ass right back to Huffy Town. He's a fun character, but we still don't know much about him. I mean, the manga has like 10 chapters so far. The last thing to praise is the fact that even though the MC is OP, he doesn't steal the show and do everything himself, since the other characters are strong and don't need him to protect them. I will say this, please share this video. Go, spread the word of this manga, tell people about it. I really want it to succeed. I want the adventure to go beyond just the first door. It deserves all the popularity it can get. Man, this beach sucks.